More than all the other animals at the Lincoln Park Zoo, the chimpanzees should hold a special place in visitors' hearts. After all, they are our closest, if very distant, non-human relatives. Just like people, they form close and complex relationships. They guard and patrol their property, and they make their own bed to sleep in at night. There are even more and astonishing similarities between chimps and us. Studies of chimpanzees go back over a hundred years. And for a long time, those studies were trying to figure out what made humans different from chimpanzees. And they, they touched on many things, whether it was language or the ability to do mathematics, things like that. But actually, over time, that gap continues to get more and more narrow. And we're actually learning more and more about what the similarities between chimpanzees and humans are. And in fact, they are capable of very complex communication. They are capable of uh, doing some uh, arithmetic, things like that. It's highly unlikely you will find the Lincoln Park Zoo chimpanzees doing math, but you may find them doing other things not seen by humans until relatively recently. It was world-renowned primatologist Jane Goodall who first observed chimps in the forests of Tanzania using sticks as tools to fish for termites. In the nearly 50 years since Goodall's groundbreaking work, scientists have learned a great deal more about chimpanzees. For example, they have a very rudimentary knowledge of medicine. We found out in the last 20 years that chimpanzees actually recognize certain plants as medicinal and they will medicate themselves. They will eat these plants when, for example, they have a stomach ache. And people have done the studies to show that the properties of these plants actually help remove parasites from their system. So they are processing, this makes me um, get better. Elizabeth Lonsdorf is the head of the Lester E. Fisher Center for the Study and Conservation of Apes at the Lincoln Park Zoo. But she's no stranger to the forests of Africa, where she has spent long stretches of time observing chimpanzees in the wild. Lonsdorf is also an editor of the book The Mind of the Chimpanzee, a collection of scholarly papers by dozens of primatologists. It's heavy on the science of chimps, but the book has an important aim. What does what we learn about how a chimpanzee's mind work help us to do in terms of conserving the species and also improving their welfare um, when they're living outside of the wild? This extraordinary video was taken in the Republic of Congo by a motion-triggered camera set up by researchers from the Lincoln Park Zoo. It's a female chimp with her young offspring clinging to her as she uses a tool, in this case a log, to get at a beehive full of honey. Most of the chimpanzees in the wild live in jungles throughout Central Africa. Many are in protected national parks, but many others don't have that safeguard. It's believed that a century ago, there were as many as two million chimpanzees in the wild. Researchers now think that number has likely been reduced by 90%. David Morgan is also with the Lincoln Park Zoo and has done extensive field research in Africa. Probably the most important risk right now that most of the apes outside of these national parks, particularly where we work, is the impact of logging. Um, it is changing their habitat. Um, so food resources are being changed. They're being changed rapidly. Poachers come into these forests and they're particularly interested in elephants for their ivory, sometimes their meat. Uh, gorillas and chimpanzees, they're particularly interested in them for meat, sometimes occasionally for the pet trade, but it's an organized crime in terms of networks. In most countries, chimpanzees are designated an endangered species, but in the United States, they have a dual status. Wild chimpanzees are officially considered endangered, but those born in captivity here are not. Part of the reason for that double standard is popular perception dating back to the likes of Cheetah. Gentlemen, this is Cheetah. Ah, a magnificent specimen of chimpanzees in dactylus. Researchers say the portrayal of chimpanzees in pop culture has led many people to believe they are abundant creatures. Ronald Reagan had a famous hand in contributing to that belief. Ah, it's a monkey. Well, sure, it's a monkey. And the public's fascination with chimps is not likely to subside anytime soon. 
this Disney movie about an abandoned baby chimp hits theaters next spring. But the reality for chimps in the U.S. includes a long history as experimental subjects. The chimpanzee, known as Ham, was the first primate to go into space in 1961. His success in orbit showed that his human relatives could also head into the final frontier. Far more controversial is the continuing use of chimpanzees in lab experiments. The United States and the Central African country of Gabon are the only two countries that still conduct invasive research on chimps. Supporters of that research point to medical breakthroughs, like a hepatitis B vaccine. But chimpanzee advocates view it as animal cruelty. Congress could soon put an end to chimp research, and naturally the Lincoln Park Zoo is pushing for it. They are reviewing the Endangered Species Act right now, and it would mean that those, the people that wanted to hold privately held chimps would have to do so for a conservation purpose, which entertainment and um, you know, commercialization is not. Conservationists would also like to put an end to chimps as pets. Michael Jackson was one of the most famous of chimp owners, but scientists point to the case of Charla Nash. In 2009, Nash's pet chimp, Travis, viciously attacked the 57-year-old, mauling her face and ripping off both of her hands. Nash has undergone extensive reconstructive surgery, but is now blind. The only place for chimps, say primatologists, is in qualified zoos or in the wild. Even though wild chimpanzees live thousands of miles away from Chicago, there is something you can do right here to help preserve their ever-diminishing habitats, and it involves the kind of wood that you buy. While African countries have different policies about logging where endangered species live, stores like Home Depot and Lowe's sell wood that is certified by the Forest Stewardship Council and carry this label. It ensures that the wood was harvested in an environmentally friendly way and did not come from endangered habitats. In the meantime, researchers hope that what they continue to learn about the mind of chimpanzees can affect change in the minds of those who can help save them. If we can convince uh, government officials, policymakers, that chimpanzees are certainly important, intelligent, uh, emotionally resonant animals, then that may help influence policies and changes in governmental regulations to help save that species in the wild. And maybe even increase the population of a relative with whom we had a common ancestor a mere four million years ago. For Chicago Tonight, I'm Eddie Arusa.